Hi gang. So over the end of the year, I started seeing a lot of these art versus artist posts. A nice way to summarize all the things you've been making all year. It's great. Another trend that started elsewhere and then got adopted by people who paint toy soldiers for fun. And I enjoyed seeing them. But it did remind me of a question I'd seen floating around a lot before. Is painting Warhammer art? So, is painting Warhammer art? It's an interesting question, and it's been asked before with various results and opinions. And it's of particular interest to me, since my day job is as a creative designer in the arts. What I do for a living is considered by many to just be art, though I'm not totally sure it always is. And bringing into question whether something counts as art can be the sort of thing that really annoys people. So, before we start this, I should say that, on the whole, it's not really a question that matters that much. Mini painting is something people pour loads of their time into to make amazing, detailed, beautiful, original results. To paint something this small to this level just takes a huge investment of time and energy and learning. And whether we decide that it counts as art or not really makes no difference to the care and skill involved. Is it art? Well, yeah or no, it's still really amazing. But even raising the question, is this art, gives quite a lot of way about the status we give that word. Telling someone their models aren't art could be seen as a criticism of their skills, or dismissive of all that time they spent. Even in a world where outside our little hobby bubble, most people probably wouldn't think of it as art, or as something worth doing at all. In fact, the status of the words art or artist is one of the problems in this conversation and why it's such a difficult question to answer. Answer, okay, that's ambitious. We're not going to finally answer the age-old question of what is art in a little video about toy soldiers, but we can look at all the different things we mean by that term and see if they apply to what we do. In my opinion, one of the reasons this is an unanswerable question is that, in English at least, we use the word art to mean a few different things, some of which directly contradict each other. First and easiest, we use art to define a category of activities. There are just some human activities which we've decided are arts, and if you do them, then you're an artist. Painting, drawing, sculpting, acting, dancing, those are arts. This is like the art store definition, can you buy the materials for it here? Well then it's art, can't you see the sign? But then we also use this word in the exact opposite way, as a marker of great skill. In this definition, art is something you do really, really well at the top of your field and can kind of apply to anything. They're not just a baker, that cake is art. This definition is where a lot of the status issues or insecurities about being known as an artist come from. But we could also define art by the modern contemporary art definition, which could be summed up as meaning. Art is anything that conveys a message that's more than just the sum of its parts. It makes people feel, or it has emotional resonance beyond just being representational or skillful. Art is defined in this by its ability to make you consider the world in a different way, and this is a definition that lots of people dislike, but that everyone has experienced. <laughs> And of course, yeah, if you've got a degree in art theory or performance theory or anything like that, I'm sure there are much better ways to phrase it, but those are the ones I'm going to use. So let's start from the top. Category. By this definition, we could absolutely argue that painting Warhammer is art. It uses paints, you use a paintbrush and supplies you can buy from an art shop. It's art. By doing it, you're an artist. Done. But we all know it's not as simple as that. My dad was a painter and decorator for a living. We wouldn't generally call painting walls art, or for that matter, technical drawing, though it does involve using pencils to illustrate something and loads of skill and ability. The way we usually get around this is by arguing that our activities have to be creative. But even that has a load of grey areas. There are loads of creative industries we don't necessarily call art. Is design art? Could be. Is architecture art? Well, only when it's fancy creative architecture? There are plenty of advertising agencies who now call themselves creative agencies, coming up with creative ways to sell a corporation's products, but we wouldn't usually call them artists, though they probably would if it meant they could charge more. And if we're saying it's not only this category of stuff, but creative uses of it, well, how much creativity? Is painting by numbers art? Is making your own marine colour scheme art because you made something new, but copying the box colour scheme isn't? 
I think this definition of art is useful as like a broad term. It's one that miniature painters definitely fit into, but it breaks down under the slightest interrogation, as does the term creative. It's a term we all understand and use, but we can't really put any limits around. So let's move on to the next one. The second term is skill. And I think here's where we hit loads of problems, even in miniature painting. If we use this definition, then some of us are miniature painters, but some of us are artists, a term of high regard that you earn by being really good at miniature painting. Okay, so obvious question, how good? Who gets to decide? When are you an artist? Do you have to win something like Golden Demon? Well, Golden Demon very specifically calls itself a painting competition, not an art competition. Do you have to use specific advanced techniques? Well, advanced Warhammer techniques like, I don't know, non-metallic metals or object source lighting weren't really used a few decades ago. So are the best painters from that era not artists anymore? Does the community decide? If this is a title awarded to someone of certain skill, surely you can't just give yourself that title. If artist is a term of status, then a painter or an illustrator referring to themselves as an artist would be like a scientist when asked what they do at a party replying, I'm a genius. This definition also has a weird relationship with words like skill and craft. We have words for being very, very good at something. Being a craftsman, knowing your craft, implies not only technical skill, but also like a feeling for what's the right decision born from years of experience. Many things we definitely consider art involve huge amounts of technical skill and craft. Our hobby definitely does. But it's not those things that necessarily define something as art. Something isn't like craftsmanship until it's better and then it's art now. And anyway, that term craft, though it originally referred to things you just make with your hands, is used much more broadly than that nowadays, especially in industries other people definitely call the arts. I am a theatre designer. I make theatre shows. In fact, I make all sorts of things now, but most of my work has been in theatre. There are loads of different designers involved in a theatre show. Set designers, sound designers, lighting designers. I design visuals and special effects. And the thing we make is pretty consistently referred to as an art. But it can be hard to pin down where the art is. Many actors, for example, would say that acting is a craft. Your job is to portray a character as believably as possible, which takes skill and sensitivity and experience, but you don't get to decide what the message of the play is. The team of theatre designers on a show will decide an awful lot about what that show is, how it looks, how it delivers its meaning, even sometimes what that meaning could be, but we're still working to a brief. Last year, I designed two different plays. One was a West End Christmas musical, a major musical theatre production with a big cast and live orchestra. To make something like that takes a ton of skill and experience, and not just in terms of purely technical things, like programming lights or set construction. The music is written to be catchy and uplifting, to hit certain beats the audience are expecting, so that when a song builds to that point and the choreography all hits that mark and the lighting and the visuals land on the same beat, the the audience clap and have fun. And if any of us get the timing or the feel wrong, they won't have fun. But I'd call all of that craft, knowing how to do your job well. Earlier in the year, I did a much smaller contemporary dance show about youth and masculinity. It took all the same skills to make, but in this, the intention was to make something much more visceral and raw and to confront issues in ways that the audience might not have thought about before. We did all the same things to make the show, but we also, as a team, went through a whole process of defining the message we wanted to send and what would be the best way to do that. Both of those shows are theatre, they are the arts. Both of them involve a huge amount of skill and experience to make them work, to make them entertaining. But I only think the second one was art. And that's not to diminish the musical, that's not trying to be that. It's a fun family night out and it does it really, really well. But only the contemporary dance show fulfilled our third definition meaning. This is the idea that art is something intentionally created by an artist to provoke a response in the viewer, something that makes them feel something or realise something or consider something in a new way. And it's the intention that makes it art. You can look at an old photo and feel something, it can mean something to you, but we probably wouldn't call it art. People 
hate this definition. There's a certain group of people who will look at art in a gallery and scoff. Call that art. It's not even good. I could have done that. You know, that sort of thing. And leaving aside that creating something that makes people feel is actually really, really difficult. Well, I think they're lying. All of us have favourite songs, films, books, things we've encountered that made us feel different or understand the world in a different way or opened our eyes to a new way of thinking about something through provoking an emotional response, a response usually intended by the artist who made it. That favourite song might not have been performed by the most technically gifted musician, sung by the most technically gifted singer. That film might not have the best editing or the best acting. We all understand it's not about that. It's about the meaning, the message, and the response you have. Everyone's experienced that, even the people who scoff at the very idea that the art is in the meaning. But can you do that with miniature painting? There's definitely contemporary art that utilises miniatures, and there's even contemporary art that utilises wargaming miniatures. Maria Virkala's found a mental connection too, has a whole string of toy animals of different scales. In between at one end of the table a Quran and at the other end of the table a Bible, and there are animals in the middle having a debate about, well, whatever you like really. It's got miniatures, but they're not toy soldiers, but what you're doing with them mixes up ideas of religious authenticity, creation myths, and childishness. But the thing that really springs to mind is the Chapman Brothers' Hell from 1999, an installation of 60,000 miniature Nazis being murdered by skeletons in hundreds of gruesome and inventive ways. I actually saw this when I was a student, and yeah, it's, it's really powerful. Designed to make you think about suffering and death and what violence we wish on people and what that means. Nothing in this would win a golden demon, but it's definitely art. On a much smaller scale, I'm reminded of a few of the entries from the 28 mag female space marine challenge last year. My friend Gary drew this illustration of three feminist punk icons reimagined as space marines. Extra points in the comments to whoever manages to get them all. I made this little diorama of a standard Primaris gunning down an out of date patriarch. I'm not suggesting that these are the most groundbreaking pieces of artistic innovation or that this is the best illustration or the best diorama ever. I definitely built mine in like two hours, but they do have a message beyond what they are. Like this classic Rogue Trader illustration of a punk being arrested by two marines for graffiti, something that conjured images of stuff that was actually happening at the time. I think it is possible to make this sort of art with Warhammer, though it's not something I've seen many people actually do. I'd quite like to see more of that in Golden Demon. It's great to see these beautiful works of immense technical skill, but I'd love it if that skill was used to examine the setting and what it means to us in our world. For me, this is the most important of our three definitions. It's the only definition of art we don't have another word for, creative activities, craft or skill, but this we only use the word art for this, so that tends to be what I mean when I use the word art, I guess. Do I think Warhammer is art? Not by that definition. Amazing craftsmanship, brilliant displays of technical skill, sure, but not art art. But that doesn't mean that that definition's perfect. We still can't use that in isolation. If we only use that definition, then pretty much everything in deviant art isn't art. All the fantastic illustrations I use in my videos aren't art. It's as reductive as the other two. I think for most of us, what we mean when we say art is probably a mix of all three of those. But if we actually applied that, then, well, very little would qualify. As I said, we're not going to answer what is art in a little video about toy soldiers or ever. But with any luck, it's made some people think about what's possible. Thanks for watching. And if you want some uh, other thoughts about the hobby, I guess, there'll be a little box popping up there just to the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are affiliate links to stores in the thing below and a link to the Patreon. See ya.